the OG, the original gangsta of this program, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. Good morning again, Rob. Yeah, how are you? It's Bill? been an interesting morning. It's been a good morning. Yeah? Yeah. So I, far, so good, right? Yeah, I think the guests have been very good. I scheduled these guests, so if you have approval of those guests, I feel like I've done my job. Well, Rob, you, when have you ever listened to us? <laughs> All the time. Uh, I've yeah. got headphones. But I can hear everything you job. say. I can hear everything <laughs> you say. Right, yeah. Our guest in the studio is uh, Matt Umstead. He has many hats, uh, not the least of which is the fact that he's the director of the Roundhouse Authority. Did I get the title? Is, is the director correct? No, that's not correct. I'm the chair of the chair. Uh, board of the directors. Chair of the board. Okay, got it. Sorry. Mm -hmm. My apologies, sir. That's fine. So... Uh, you took me on a tour of the Roundhouse grounds while I was there for the home show and gave me the background and history of uh, the Roundhouse and its challenges it faces in regards to future development, getting it from point A to point B to point C. Mm -hmm. I think we've, we've kind of gotten it to point B or C. Uh, I think there's a lot of people that like to see it get to point Z at the end and be right. what everyone envisions it to being. Matt, what are the challenges of moving the Roundhouse forward and making even more improvements? I, one of the biggest and by the roundhouse, I mean the entire grounds and property. Yeah. yeah, one of the the number one challenge, of course, for the uh, property, which is a 13 acre site that the Berkeley County Roundhouse Authority Board of Directors is responsible for maintaining and uh, um, you know taking care of uh, under the uh, legislation that was passed in 1999, uh, was that the history of the property was built as a connection to the active railroad line. It was not built to connect to private, or I should say public roadways. And of course, back then there were no cars, there were no uh, you know, uh, active public transportation, vehicle transportation uh, system that we have today. So the access, the vehicle, um, modern vehicle access uh, for cars and trucks and commercial vehicles is just simply uh, lacking. Uh, it needs to be improved. That's the number one issue with, with the property today, is vehicle access for um, modern transportation, uh, non-railroad access uh, for, for people to deliver rentals, uh, whether they're bringing uh, tables and chairs for an event, uh, catering um, uh, companies to bring food to deliver for special events that are held there, mm -hmm. um, staging equipment for shows or concerts or uh, farmers bring in their uh, produce, uh, which we're hoping uh, we're at. Well, we're not hoping we're going to have farmers there starting on June 3rd, every oh, Saturday from uh, every Saturday from 10 to 2, uh, in partnership and great collaboration with Main Street Martinsburg and the West Virginia Department of Agriculture, which is supporting the the, the, the efforts uh, with a four-year commitment of funding to to have the farmers market there. So, um, with Robbie Blair and the gang at Main Street Martinsburg. Um, rebranding the farmers market with Main Street that's a very positive step to bringing awareness not only to uh, access and improving access because uh, you know hopefully that'll bring people there regularly on Saturdays but it will also bring more people there to basically make them more aware of the history and the heritage of the property. Now, I want to ask you a couple of questions before Bill goes here uh, hang on there a second Billy uh, Explain the relationship between the Roundhouse Authority, the legislature, the city of Martinsburg, and Berkeley County government. It's very simple. Um, the, the authority of, of, West, of West Virginia, the, the power of West Virginia relies in the state legislature and the state government, and, and only the powers they give uh, to the local governments and the local authorities. So you have the transit authority, which is um, the legislature gave power to run public transit. You gave the development authority, which the legislature gave to foster economic development. You have the airport authority, which was given power to run the airport. In this case, the state legislature gave authority to a entity, a public corporation, to run and manage and preserve and maintain the roundhouse, the Martinsburg shops, as they call them, uh, that were formerly owned and operated by the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad. Um, in that legislation, like all the other authorities that are in Berkeley County, uh, they're all directed and authorized to, by the, the local governments are authorized to make appointments to the respective authority boards of directors uh, for each one of those entities. So the transit authority, all those board members are appointed by county and city folks. The airport also has city and county uh, appointed folks to their boards. Same way here, the roundhouse board is 
is also composed of folks who are appointed by the city and county as authorized by the state legislature. And what is the funding obligation by the, for the city or the county in regards to the Roundhouse Authority? The law says that, that the, the counties and cities of, of the Berkeley County area, it doesn't specify necessarily any particular cities or counties have to appoint members, but it does expect generally to provide. The word is to provide. And so and that's defined as contributing funds and support in, uh, in, in some way, some amount, no specified amount. It just says that a municipal government or a county government must provide in order to be able to appoint members. So is there your responsibility to provide them with a budget or an amount of money that There's, you're requesting each year, or do they just do that on their own? They, The county and the city have pure dis discretion on any funding amounts that they wish to allocate to the Roundhouse Authority. There's no prescribed amount, obligation, or expectation, really. And, and otherwise, what are your abilities to actually have revenue streams? Revenue streams now are strictly confined to um, uh, private rentals, generally speaking. Um, we do have some public events that are privately uh, sponsored, like the Eastern Panhandle Home Builders Association Home Show. That's a private organization. They have paid a rental fee to rent the space uh, spaces at the Roundhouse for their show. Uh, they have contributed uh, graciously uh, through a five-year contract, $5,000 a year they've agreed to, to you know, pay the Roundhouse Authority. That's one uh, rental. We have web weddings. We also have um, nonprofit groups that have, uh, that want to have well, there's one. There's a nonprofit concert coming up, a recovery benefit concert coming up in September. Um, they have a discounted rate, but they still give us a contribution. Um, we also have um, heritage events, which are are non. Uh, they're, they're donation oriented, um, like the Bunker Hill Train Club. They're a heritage uh, group, and we we allow them to use it, the property at no f charge, but they give us a donation, a very nice, uh, generous mm -hmm. donation for a small group. They're, they're, they're amazing. Um, but they uh, give us a, a nice donation every, every show. But th this stream in and of itself does not sound like it would provide enough revenue to be able to make the renovations and improvements on the grounds and the buildings there that would be required to bring that to the potential that it has. I was talking about operating revenues. Now, capital revenues are a little different. Um, the city and the county of uh, Berkeley um, have both contributed matching grant funds. The county has, uh, and the city both have contributed, in this most recent case, uh, contributed 10% uh, each toward a 20% uh, match requirement for the elevator and steps project uh, that's going to support the uh, market. Uh, market center event center project that is underway uh, construction on that uh, was authorized to start may 1st and will continue through the end of this year um, and there's also an hvac system uh, hvac project that also is for the same uh, project uh, same building uh, that is uh, being funded with through the city's support of recovery grant money uh, and uh, county all, uh, county support has also been provided allocated as well as some legislative commitment uh, money uh, to, to come together and, and fund an H HVAC heating ventilation air conditioning project to get the building uh, to be able to be used year-round to generate the revenues that will give us a revenue stream. Uh, just to cite an example, that we're and we're looking at an actual more global <clears throat> uh, idea to uh, get uh, basically a bridge uh, financing situation where um, we, uh, like similar to the Development Authority, they a few years back bought a building uh, at 300 Foxcroft Avenue, and the county has long been a supporter of the development authority was giving them allocations of funds over the years well they no longer need those funds because they now have a building where they're generating revenue that's basically taking care of their bills and their their needs um, that's essentially what we're we're pursuing for the roundhouse uh, is uh, is some bridge funds okay. billy yeah i'm looking backward now as opposed to forward uh, uh matthew uh and my information may be dated, sure. but you mentioned three or four authorities, the Transit Authority, the Development Authority, the Airport Authority, mm -hmm. the county and the city. I expect most of the county, because that's where I was involved, uh, contributed a substantial amount of money every year. We're talking mm -hmm. about the Development Authority, uh, at least a half a million dollars, mm -hmm. and probably a comparable amount to the others. I do not remember ever 
contribute a, a significant dime to the uh, to the Roundhouse Authority. And where all this line of questions started was Kevin Knowles then a couple of weeks ago, mm-hmm. and the question was asked about the Development Authority, uh, the Roundhouse Authority, and Kevin made some comment, well, the county needs to step up and do something, something, something. And... And I did not think it was the county had that role there. And uh, so that's what started asking the questions. And mm-hmm. this has been very illuminary. I, I, for the first time, I have a better appreciation mm-hmm. of how the Roundhouse Authority operates. Mm-hmm. But you cannot do significant improvement unless you have a dedicated revenue stream, mm-hmm. uh, either from the state or from one of the local entities. Uh, are you pursuing a dedicated revenue stream, i.e. what the county had with the Development Authority for all these years? Yes. Uh, the short answer to that is yes, and I need to clarify one key important fact. The county in the last several years has provided annual um, operating funds, okay. if you want to call it, in the, in the form of insurance. They have covered the county's, uh, they have covered the Roundhouse Authority's insurance for its buildings and property. Yeah. This year, that allocation is $28,000, and we very much appreciate the support of President Whitaker, Vice President Gokenauer, and everyone else at the county for their, and Mr. Davis uh, and the staff for supporting uh, the Roundhouse with the, with those insurance funds. But yes, the short answer is the, 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 the year round uh, ability of use of the property, year round rentals of the property and the ability to have the, 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 the one building, what they call the bridge and machine shop, available for re- year-round rental uh, revenue generation will, will help tremendously with um, uh, self-sustaining uh, funds. And, uh, you know, this elevator and steps project, which again is going to be completed by the year's end, uh, at least that's the projection, and the HVAC for this very same uh, bridge and machine shop building uh, to make that a year-round facility uh, is also going to be completed the contract signed on that as well this year that's how close we are to having a year-round facility Uh, and once those two projects are in place we are just I mean very 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 close to having the doors open for reservations in 2024 yeah for year-round rentals and that that will generate substantially more revenue now do we have several weddings a year right now without any guarantees of hvac on the property yeah we do we just had the martinsburg high prom there they did they paid for the rental at the martinsburg uh, roundhouse building itself with uh, with no seasonal weather uh, climate control guarantees people still come to the facility and want to have their events there with rain shine however whatever the weather is they they still want to that's how much it is an attraction for people to to have their activities and events there so i i yeah i applaud you and your predecessors uh the only big only large amount of funding that i'm aware of when senator bird put close to a million dollars in a few years ago and the work that was done is kind of transparent and visible to most but it was extremely important because it supported structural integrity which it did and so you have a building or complex of buildings nearly 150 years of age structurally they're still sound right and uh, so that's a major step forward but still the point is you, you're trying to do other things, and the and a dedicated revenue stream, to me, is critical to making that happen. Yeah, the bridge, the bridge, the bridge financing uh, uh, vision we have, we think, is, is, is a, we're looking at a th- uh, an opportunity for three years of, of payments on a loan, essentially. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's essentially what we're exploring. And we'll see where it goes. I don't want to say too much about it because it's very preliminary, but we're investigating that opportunity. And then we're looking, obviously, to partner, reach out, collaborate with some partners in the community to help us basically be a bridge for us. Okay. So, and that, that, I don't... (laughs) I don't want to put anyone in any awkward uh, yeah. positions, but that's what we're looking at. And I don't want to put you in an awkward position, but the loan you're looking for, would that be substantial enough that you can make these improvements that's been look, looked at and needed for so many years? It's a global approach to complete the uh, – uh, to what the study and the recommendations have been on the table for for many years, which is to fully, fully complete the bridge and machine shop, because the bridge and machine shop, according to the studies, according to the uh, experts that came came in and looked at the property, that is the revenue generator for the 
the complex, and, the and first and which, second. Describe floor. the building so everybody listening <clears throat> knows exactly which of the buildings that is. It is the very long rectangular building that is parallel to the railroad tracks. So when you're looking across the tracks from the train station parking lot and you're looking from downtown, you're in downtown Martinsburg, and you're looking across the tracks at the complex, you're looking at the long parallel building, the, a long building, rectangular building that is parallel to the tracks. So it's got the very long face facing the tracks. It's first and it's a two-story building. The upper floor is a beautiful open floor uh, space. Suspended floor, Suspended right? a floating floor space that is, that every time a bride-to-be uh, sees it, she's like, oh my gosh, can we have our event here? And I'm like, not just yet, yeah. but we're there. We're and and the amounts we can charge for that space yeah. when we get how, how much in. money are we talking about to improve that building where you wanted to get. Well, we we still have on the first floor. We have a concrete bed that came in at one hundred seventy five thousand dollars in in March. We didn't have that money. We had to cut that out of the project that we wanted to do with the elevator and steps. We just didn't have another one hundred seventy five thousand. Uh, so we need roughly that amount, or maybe a little bit more. Who knows? Or maybe a little less if the climate improves. Um, we also have an ADA door project there, which is projected at another 91, 95, probably about 100,000 now with inflation, or maybe a little bit more. So those two key projects need to be done there on that first floor. There's some furnishings. There's, you yeah. know, there's some renovations inside for a restaurant we want to put in on the first floor. Um, there's some uh, infrastructure for kitchen, uh, you know, to obviously support a restaurant. Um, uh, where there's obviously some furnishings, as I mentioned, uh, uh, that are needed. You would need those in both spaces. Um, and um, I'm trying to think what, oh, there is some, um, there is some uh, uh, st uh, parking yeah. improvements that need to be made. However, uh, this is where we get into the, the red tape a little bit. National Historic Landmark, one of 16 in West Virginia, that's the roundhouse. And with that designation comes a heightened level of requirements and restrictions for mm -hmm. parking. Even yeah. paving the even paving the entrance road yeah. is, is 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 a challenge. It may be yeah. not even allowed. So wow. those are things that we have to deal with. Matthew, the building you're talking about is the one that houses the that turn in turn no. in base. Oh, that's no. not that's no. not. Okay. The 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 round house is actually 16 sided, yeah. and it's round, uh, and it's in the center. It's the centerpiece. It's the centerpiece of the of the landmark okay. designation. It holds most of the displays for the home show. Yeah. Right, the home show. The the building is to the left of the okay. round house, yeah. and I okay. should have clarified that it's to the left. Um, we do have a vision for the building to the right of the round house, which is called the Frog and Switch. It's a one floor building, and we also see that as event center, event use space as well. In fact, that's where the concert for the recovery concert where is coming up in September is going to be held in that building. So, was that the room where they did the silent auctions? Uh, for they the, did the silent auctions in the back space of that of building, that building called right. the blacksmith shop, yeah. and that's a portion of that building. Yeah, Matthew, do you have any idea how much it would cost to do all of these buildings and bring them to where you would? You'd say we're there, to, we finished. To fully bring, and we did, a, I didn't finish all the different assessments that we've obtained, but to fully finish the, the market center and the uh, indoor capital market like style first floor uh, space we want to put in the bridge machine and the, the upstairs and, and, and the outdoor seasonal pavilion, outdoor farmers market pavilion outside behind the bridge and machine. We, we looked at about basically one and a half million which um, is not a lot of money considering is not but but you're approaching this in bite-sized pieces more so than going out looking for a grant that would cover it all well all that's right. not quite okay. up to date okay. the one thing that i, I want to say also is is that we did get a friendly phone call from a, a senator in washington dc about a, about a, a request for some funds and that was a a, a, a nice uh, uh, announcement to get it's very preliminary it has to be approved by the congress and the president yeah, and everybody yeah, yeah. so we'll see where that goes but it's a very uh, large amount of funds and if that works out that will be tremendous was that a west virginia uh, senator by chance yes that would be a west virginia senator and uh you might know his name his first name is joe, joe. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, <laughs> uh he's he's great uh he's been very supportive and we really appreciate him and his staff before we run out of time we've only got about two minutes left i'd like you to hit the events coming up may 11 to 14 yes um we have uh heritage 
uh, this is a, a, a continued effort to to bring collaboration among heritage groups in the community. Every year, they've had uh, heritage events in May at the Adam Stephen House, and and those folks have been great to work with. Uh, the, the Duck Derby is back on the cr- uh, creek, and uh, with Main Street Martinsburg as a partner, we're excited uh, with collaborating with them and bringing that event back to the uh, Tuscarora, and uh, a whole series of uh, events at the Roundhouse as well with the Heritage Fair. Uh, Daughters of the American Revolution, Julia Gates, Carolyn Shade, um, great ladies to work with, helped put together the, the Heritage Fair at the Roundhouse. Um, uh, celebration of Heritage through the years, uh, 10 to 5 each day on Saturday and Sunday. We're going to have some artillery fire to kick off the uh, the uh, opening of the Heritage Fair at the Roundhouse and some Civil War reenactments and just a lot of different, uh, you know, activities. Um there was also an exhibit of interwoven socks at the library that's opening up on Thursday evening of five to seven. There's an opening reception for an uh, exhibit of art. Uh, there's art illustrations by uh, Norman Rockwell and uh, J.C. Leyendecker, who did advertisements for interwoven mills, and we all know that's being renovated. Mm-hmm. So there's lots of, lots of heritage uh, to be celebrated in Berkeley County, a special place, unique history. Uh, the birthday of the county, If I before I walk out of here, I'm be remiss. It'll be 251 years old on May 15th. And so this is uh, in time in concert with that, that, that anniversary. So Matt, now hang on. We'll be back with the final minute with Matt Umstead. You, by the way, you can learn more about the roundhouse at roundhousewv.com. Anything you want to know about it is right there on that page. Great stuff there, Matt. 